So it is time for SoFi's earnings call. And man, am I excited for the call because the stock is just on an epic run once again, skyrocketing over $10, which in the past meant we were about to fall back down to $6 in short order. So let's talk about if that is indeed gonna be the case once again, and more importantly, what matters on this particular earnings call. And I'll give you my exact plan for SoFi stock. But I also have a massive warning as well that you have to understand as a SoFi investor, especially around this time of year, because it's just one of those things that it could absolutely destroy your SoFi investment. That's right. If you don't understand it, Wall Street is looking to screw you over once again. So you got to have an understanding of it. Just make sure you like the video if you like getting the truth without the hype, because that's exactly what you're going to get today. So there are three things that matter on this earnings. We're going to talk about that. I'll tell you my exact plan for SoFi. And I'll tell you exactly how Wall Street's going to try and screw you as well. So number one, do they continue to be profitable? Now guys, this one is easy for me, but slow down before you go blasting me about why is this even a thing that's out there? Guys, I don't know where it's coming from, but I've heard a lot of folks questioning uh, SoFi's profitability. Maybe they're not gonna turn a profit this time around. I, I get it, their EPS isn't a whole lot, but there's a whole lot of, especially out there in the bear community on SoFi, a lot of folks are out there saying that, hey, we could have a miss this time around, not just a miss, but they may not even be profitable this time around. We're going to see the EPS number go negative again. Now, again, I can't find a tangible reason for that thought process at all. So I just tend to ignore it altogether. But I can't say that if that were to not happen and we did have a non-profitable quarter, that would obviously be a huge, huge uh, impact on the stock price in the short term there. And of course, they would have to really, really explain it away in order for it to be a positive or in order for it just not to be as devastating as it would be. But I see no indication that this is the case. There's nothing tangible there that I can see at all. And I guess it's just a product of the day and age that we live in where people are just more than happy to throw out the most ridiculous bear narratives out there. And I understand people do it to the positive as well. You're absolutely correct there. But hey, maybe it's just one of those things where we just kind of say, I don't know, welcome to 2024 investing, especially out there in CNBC land and YouTube land and everywhere else. Just part of the things that we're going to have to deal with. This is why I say ignore the noise in the first place. But talking about profitability, that leads us perfectly into number two, which is will they continue the beat and raise strategy? Look, we have seen more 10 plus quarter. I don't know, we're on 12, 14. I don't freaking know. I guess I need to go back and do the math at some point in time. It's kind of irrelevant at a certain point. But for that many straight quarters, they have basically beat and raised over and over and over again. Almost every single quarter, that is exactly what they have done to the point where I kind of almost expect it in a way. Now that could be good and bad, right? You know, you could have a great quarter, but because you don't also raise guidance that quarter, you know, that kind of sets you up for a little bit of a downfall there, depending upon how stupid Wall Street wants to go. Now, I know exactly what I would do in that scenario. <laughs> you know, I'd be adding to shares to that. But this time around, Wall Street ran up the stock price coming into earnings. It's happened a few other times, but this time they've really run it up coming into earnings there to where the beat and raise strategy needs to be more than just kind of the beat and raise strategy per se you need blow it out of the water beats and then obviously a significant increase in guidance to probably really impress Wall Street at these particular prices. If they do that, they're gonna be able to keep this momentum going moving forward. Obviously it'll shift valuations, it'll shift everything out there. If they're not able to do it, that could be a situation where the stock gets beaten down once again. But that is to your advantage. If you've done a valuation, you have a price target, you understand what you're on, and you've already planned for it. It's why I bought SoFi like, I don't know, almost 10 or maybe it may be over 10 times now in the six and $7 range just this year in regards to the stock because I understand exactly what I own. I've been disciplined, I did evaluation, and I know exactly what I'm doing and exactly how I want to add to this stock. X SoFi is my biggest position and my portfolio challenge and that portfolio is up over 40% in just six months because I did exactly that. That is what planning, your due diligence, and your valuation get you, and you have to learn it. And if you don't know how to do due diligence, valuations, price targets, and you want to learn, and you want to see my buys in real time in SoFi, in Palantir, in Tesla, and basically every single stock that I'm looking to buy, the spooky Halloween sale ends in just a few days where you get to learn and see all of that in real time through coaching, through the courses, through all my buy and sell alerts in real time, and so much more, guys. There's so much involved. It's the pinned comment down there, and we'll talk more about it at the end of the video because we got to get into SoFi's earnings a little bit deeper. So number three... What is the continued impact of slowing down lending? Now they've guided to it. They talked about it the quarter before. They talked about it last quarter. 
what is going to be the impact on the bottom line from the slowing down in lending? Now, obviously they said they wanted to do it until the rate environment gets a little bit better. Obviously there's ways to make money in both types of environments. We've seen that with the bank earnings across the board, but SoFi has a very specific strategy that they're trying to use in order to mitigate some of the risks that could come later on as rates continue to drop. But what's kind of gonna be the impact in regards to the stock in regards to EPS, revenue, some other things of that nature through the end of the year here as we kind of get deeper into the rate hiking cycle. Now, what I love about the strategy is it means they can flip that lending switch later on to really generate a lot of revenue in the future. And they're not taking advantage of that right now. They're not maxing out their lending capacity. And more importantly, that kind of helps us with that FinTech multiple as well. So that's kind of a multi-pronged attack on there, but we've got to understand deeper what is going to be the impact to the numbers. And that's something I'm absolutely looking forward to and looking for on this earnings call. A very unique situation for sure, but remember, Wall Street wants profits over everything else, and obviously that could be kind of a hindrance to everything that they're trying to do there. So that's the reason why this is kind of critical and kind of another key that we need to be looking at. And now that I think about it, guys, we're gonna give you a fourth one as well here. So kind of a bonus here, just kind of stick with me here. You'll wanna hear this one too. So number four, do we see significant growth in financial services and the tech platform? This is key to the bull case for SoFi, guys. You guys know it if you've been watching this channel for any point in time. We need those things to increase and start increasing significantly and outpace the lending side so that way we can get that more fintech multiple. So that way you can more importantly justify that fintech multiple. If not, and if banking continues to outpace those and outpace it by a pretty significant margin, you really risk Wall Street kind of categorizing you in one category and not giving you that fintech multiple. So we need that mix of everything coming in to kind of be 50-50, you know, 50% 50 more traditional banking activities, 50% over here with the tech platform and some other, you know, money management, some other things of that nature over here, more on the fintech side, so that way we can justify a much higher valuation in the future, which is key to the bull case for SoFi. So what is my plan with SoFi stock? Well, once again, if we get guidance in regards to the future, it'll give me a chance to adjust my price targets. Once again, kind of take a look at all my numbers there and kind of reevaluate my position with uh, SoFi. But if we don't get guidance or if the adjusted guidance is more normal guidance, I'm not gonna call it weak guidance because if it's still an increase, it's still an increase. But if it's not a significant increase of any kind and the stock runs really, really big on that, or like I said, if there's no guidance given at all, the numbers are good, uh, you know, not blow it out of the water or anything else like that, but just good. And the stock goes on a pretty significant uptick right afterwards. I would be very, very cautious around that because it could be the perfect Wall Street setup for a rug pull. And we know that's exactly how they want to do. So for me, I would be very, very cautious in that particular scenario. Now, also keep in mind for myself, as I kind of tell you what my plan here is with SoFi, I promise I'll get to it, kind of trying to give you guys the context here. I already built out the vast majority of my position, if not all of it, in 2022. When you can buy in that 4 and $5 range, it just kind of seemed like it couldn't get started at all uh, back during that time frame there. So that right there is where I built it out. Obviously, I was able to add in 2023 pretty significantly. And again, this year as well, as you can tell by my earlier, uh, you know, set 10 plus buys in that six, $7 range. I bought the stock a lot this year as well. I've been able to buy it a lot. So not only do I have a full position, I have a ton of bonus shares as well, but with a company that continues to perform, I want to continue to buy that stock into the foreseeable future. I could never buy another share of Apple again, probably 10 years ago, and I would still be just fine. Never need another share again, but every single time a great company goes on a discount, I pick up shares of that stock because that's what a prudent investor does. They continue to add the great stocks over time that just continue to perform on earnings. And that's not stock price on earnings. And that's exactly what we're getting and have been getting in regards to SoFi. So I will continue to strategically add at my price targets down there. It's below $7 right now because I have all the shares that I need and I'll be patient and wait for that. But of course, Wall Street could have completely different plans. And that right there is the warning that I wanna talk about. And it's not just a short-term warning, just simply for earnings today. This is also a long-term warning as well for SoFi stock. So what is my big concern with SoFi stock? Well, my big concern with SoFi stock, and it's been my concern from the start, is that Wall Street decides to treat it like a bank and not like a FinTech. And now don't yell at me, guys. I don't get to control this in the end. You and I don't control this. Wall Street 100% controls this. If they choose to, now again, I think we're gonna get a mix of some sort. Now, whether that's 50-50, you know, 50% FinTech, 50% bank, whether that's 60-40, I don't know. But the reality is, and the thing that I have to account for, not this crazy, you know, 0.0001% chance of this on the bull or the bear side, 
What I have to consider it is realistic that Wall Street may just decide that, hey, we just think it's more of a bank uh, and we'll give it more of a bank multiple. Maybe it's growing, obviously, a lot bigger than a bank would, uh, faster than a bank would go. That's okay. We'll give it a little bit of a bump up. We're not going to get close to that, you know, kind of hybrid multiple that I think we should get in regards to SoFi. And if that happens, it means a completely different outlook for SoFi stock. So you got to be prepared for that if that happens. And my members are prepared for that because I let out the bull and the bear case complete over the next two years for SoFi stock, where I basically accounted for what happens if Wall Street decides to give it a bank multiple, what exactly could we be looking at from a valuation and stock price standpoint? Where would fair value be then? We've laid all that out, which you can get access to if you take advantage of the spooky Halloween sale before it ends just in a few days, where you get access to that. You get access to five free courses, free coaching to help you out with valuations and price targets and everything else like that. You get to be a part of the best six, seven, and eight figure discount out there. See my complete watch list with price targets. See all my buy and sell alerts in real time. Jump onto that $250 portfolio challenge where we're already up over 40 plus percent in regards to that challenge already, we got some group members that are actually up 50 and 60%. Uh, they're just absolutely crushing it. Uh, they post their buys in there as well. And so much more, guys. Make sure you check out the pinned comment and see if a membership's right for you. And click this video here if you want to see exactly what I'm buying in this market. And click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next walk.